Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, afternoon uh, session of the UASEP meeting. Um, hopefully, you all had a great break. And uh, I'm glad we decided to break it up because I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time with two hour Zoom meetings. <laughs> that kills me. So hopefully it was a nice break, good lunch, and uh, ready to, to jump back in to, uh, to some of the, uh, the agenda items we've got today on our calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just take an, another quick look at uh, what we have listed here for our afternoon agenda. We talked about that a little bit in the morning, um, but what we'll be going over is some UASEP business items. So we'll start off by doing some committee updates and we'll have each of our committee chairs uh, talk about some of the things that we've been working on. I, I will tell you that the leadership committee has been pretty busy over the last year, um, trying to figure out how do we evolve and, and, uh, and, and grow the organization uh, amidst a pandemic and trying to figure out what value add items we can, we can add to practitioners out there and make this organization something that is uh, relevant and interesting and useful to everybody who attends. So we've got some uh, interesting things in the works and, uh, and a lot of you received a survey a little while back that, uh, that we asked your opinion about what, what can we do? What are some things that we could do uh, as an organization to add greater value? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, also, I'm gonna go over some ad hoc projects. So we have an ad hoc committee in the bylaws and we're gonna talk about some projects that sort of came from that survey that we sent out and see if we have anybody who's willing to take some ownership in those projects and move them forward at, uh, at your own pace. Also, we have a couple of bylaw updates that we'll go over and, uh, and then we're, we're looking for a secretary because Holly Handy has retired. And so we need somebody to fill in uh, as the secretary. So we'll take a couple of minutes to, to uh, hopefully take care of that. And, uh, and then last of all, we'll go into higher ed and public ed breakouts. This is the first time that I have ever used breakouts in Zoom. We tried to do pre-assignments. We'll see how well that works. But there may be some of you that didn't fill out that form that we sent out. And so we'll have to figure out how to get you added into the appropriate uh, breakout room. So that's the agenda for, uh, for this afternoon. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and move on over to uh, committee updates. So I'll... Uh, Go ahead and call on the committee members one at a time and then turn the time over to you to go ahead and provide updates. So since I can uh, see Becky here at the top of the list, I'm gonna turn it over to Becky and let her go ahead and talk about uh, about her committee, which is the, let's see, we call it the communications committee, right? Is that what we've, what we've called it? Okay, so I'll turn it over to you, Becky. Okay, so the communica communications committee has been working really hard on just being able to, um, get to all of the information easily. Um, and so we've been updating the website a lot, um, trying to get some listserv uh, things out there, make sure everybody's using that. It's a great way to get questions answered if you guys need help with something. So, you know, you can just use that listserv at any time if you're struggling with something and you just need some opinions. Um, I, I sent one out, you guys will, uh, some of you guys responded to just last month and I got lots of really good responses. So if those of you that responded to my question, um, thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. You can kind of see what we've done with our website. Um, we're doing uh, webinars every month. I, th I think we're doing them, are we doing them every two weeks, Brandon? Um, there. It's uh, once a month. Uh, we we okay. have a couple that will be, uh, you know, there may be two in a month, but mostly it's one, once a month. Okay, so once a month, it'll be at the last Thursday of the month at 1.30. So that's about when we're doing all of the webinars. Um, I have listed them all on our website though. So um, There we go. So this is our website. We've been doing a lot of updates on there. Um, if you go into the calendar, you can kind of see all of the webinars and um, things that we are doing um, with UASEP. Any events that we have will be listed there. Um, we didn't, I I kind of did got the, the list this last minute and so 
Um, the comp, this is just the conference from last year. So um, conferences and everything will be on there. Um, but we are trying to find a way for you guys to be able to um, go in with just a password um, to get the information for the Zoom meetings on these different webinars. Um, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Something wasn't working quite right on the program. So we will be sending those out through the listserv. So if, if you see something that you want to see, you'll get uh, you'll get something on the listserv on how to log into that and, and be a part of that webinar. Um, but each one will tell you, you know, what the web webinar is about. Um, and the um, presenter will be on the on the listserv notification that we send. So a lot of really good ones coming up. We've got um, a couple of here coming up in March. We've got a couple coming up in April. And then after that, I think it'll be monthly. Um, some of the other things that we're doing, like I said, with the listserv, we're sending out those, those messages, um, kind of just promoting the listserv and how helpful it can be. Um, and then we also have the resources um, repository. So if you have something that you want to share that is working really well for you, please send it over to me. Um, if we don't have anything on there yet. I've got a few that the committee will be looking at to maybe add to this, but this will just be, we've got a split between the higher education and the public education. Um, so, um, and you know, if it, if it is good information for both, we'll put it in both places. Um, but this, is, this will be a really good place to get resources as well if you have questions or you need help or like, hmm, how can I make this form work? And well, maybe that form will already be on here because somebody else has already developed one. So if you have any good resources to share, please send those in. We'll get those added on here. Um, anytime that you want to be at a webinar, but you just can't make it, they will be listed right here under webinars. So this last one that we did on February 24th is right here. The recording is there. Um, I also included, we also included the presentation slides. I, I said I, but it really wasn't me. It was my committee. Um, Steve Pugmire, thank you. <laughs> um, but it just kind of gives you information about it. So anytime you miss a webinar and you want to see it, it's going to be right there. Um, I think that's really it for the communications. So I'll send it back over to you, Brandon. All right, awesome. Um, I just wanted to ask too, and you guys can post in the chat. But how did, uh, for those of you who were able to attend that webinar, how, how did that how did that go? Did you guys uh, did you like that format of having these sort of monthly webinars on topics that? Uh, that are, are hopefully relevant to different practitioners. And I'll, I'll add too that the webinar uh, topics that we got were based on that survey that we sent out to everybody talking about, you know, what are some, what are some of the resources that you would love? What are some, uh, you know, some of the inf some information or things you'd like to be able to know and that sort of thing. Did you, did you all feel like that was, uh, that those were useful to you for those, those of you who were able to attend it? We had a pretty good attendance there. So, uh, so if you have any ideas of, of things for webinars that you think, man, it'd be great if I, if I knew how to do this, like that would make my job so much easier, um, send those to us. Uh, you can either send it to, through the listserv or you can send it to one of the, one of the UASEP leadership committee. Uh, and if you know people who could potentially present on that, that would be phenomenal. So we can uh, hopefully have some really, really useful and relevant webinars for you all. Okay, why don't we go ahead and turn the time now over to uh, Karma, because you're next on my list here. So okay. if you want to go ahead and take some time to talk about the events committee and some of the things we've talked about as a leadership organization, what we're thinking for events. You bet. So um, I'm Karma Bateman. I'm a CTE coordinator in a high school. So um, just to give you a perspective of where I'm at, I'm currently at Jordan High School in the Canyon School District, and I have a committee um, with people from Davis School District and a couple of the universities. So we were in charge of event planning, of which nothing happened in 2021. So we're moving on to 2022. 
And we will be planning a one day conference on March 2nd of 2022, which is the first Tuesday in March of 2022. So we're hoping to plan that conference around a, a learn and explore and launch kind of experience so that we can have speakers focused on the different areas that we have identified from the surveys that you submitted. And those areas are expanding access to special populations, student participation gaps, and then data gathering. What should we be monitoring that will be the most helpful to us um, moving our organization forward and concurrent enrollment across the state forward. And we're hoping to make this conference very interactive and relevant with a great deal of engagement from the members. So we believe that um, our group of people have more expertise and knowledge and um, background, just all of those types of things to enrich each of us. So I don't know that we need to bring in anything else. We can just pool our knowledge and our talents and get where we want to go. So we'll have areas that we can brainstorm in and break out groups so we can actually come up with some solutions and projects at that conference. We just really hope that we can use these conferences to network and move our organize, organization further. So it's been, a, it's been an amazing year, right? It's been a very challenging year, but one with tremendous growth and, it, and it's forced us to attempt different things that we never would have attempted. And so we can keep some of those things that were excellent and weed through the things that, that just were more work than they were worth and, and capitalize on what we've learned this year. I think I am, I'm passionate about student equity and I'm, I'm grateful that that is where our organization is going to be spending a lot of their energy is, is reaching out towards these underrepresented populations that we talked about a little bit um, in our opening session. So mark March 2nd, 2022 on your calendars and we'll see you there. Awesome, thanks Karma. Mm -hmm. uh, Jill, why don't you go ahead? Hi everybody. Um, it's been a lot of fun to be part of this um, group brainstorming and learning from all the experience of everyone. I've really enjoyed working with you all this year. Um, my role, I know most of you, but my role is with the specifically with the Utah Bridge program. Um, we will be in 66 high school sites next year. So we're expanding from four to 66. So it's been great to uh, get to know you all. I really value this, this connection greatly. Um, the goal, uh, the way that I link to all of you in my perspective is that our goal for this series of courses, high, sc high school university courses, is linked to access to other content area. We need our students to be accessing English and science and math and all of the other amazing things in order to be college ready. Um, so I appreciate that connection to you all. Um, my breakout group was um, extra topics. <clears throat> to be defined. And what we, we met last time, um, there were about five wonderful people that joined me at the table for extra topics. What we decided we would like to focus on was actually equity. So I don't know if that's an extra topic <laughs> or not. Um, what I'd like to do is um, ask everyone to think about if you would like to join as a committee now that we sort of have identified that as an area of focus. Um, some things I'd like to throw out to you all to consider is how can we promote college and career readiness behaviors? Um, what are, what's happening in districts? How can we share ideas of the initiatives? Um, I'm aware of a few things, but um, I thought maybe if we could get a few uh, people together to form this committee and join me, we could begin to do some outreach and begin to systematically share um, what's happening uh, locally or um, regionally, and then we can expand our, our ability to address equity issues across the state. Something else, um, I really appreciated Nathan's um, data this morning. Um, everything has been focused, I hear a lot of focus on access for equity, but I need to put in the plug that we need to be aware of achievement or we don't have equity. So we, we need achievement to be measured as well. Um, 
merely getting in the door is not the goal to me. It's um, what we can do with the um, curriculum, the teaching, in addition to like community outreach. I think these are all things that we have to begin to put together or we will not, um, we will not arrive at the goal. So um, all of us are, are in a great position because we have, uh, we're in the room talking about policy and policy is critical for access. Um, so I think that that is a, a something that our organization can contribute, but I really wanna urge everyone to think of how we can network with our teaching and learning. Um, I think we need to, to be broader than mere, merely policy, even though policy is critical. So, um, like I said, I am aware of some great initiatives. I don't want to present today, but I would like to propose that maybe if, if anyone is willing to join me to begin to um, do this outreach and see if, if some of you are willing to present, even if a five minute, two minute um, overview of, of the good things happening in your district or um, institution, how higher ed is meshing with K-12, um, that's what I think we need to start to share. I, I'm proposing that as a place to start. So if you want to contact me or Brandon as the lead, uh, either way, or just message me now and send me your email, I would love to have you join the, uh, join the good fight. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Jill. Let me just add to, so originally when we formed the special projects committee, which, uh, which Jill's overseeing, um, the, the sort of the thinking was, you know, maybe the organization would identify things that we want to pursue as like cool projects, either in equity or access or whatever that topic might be. And then that committee would sort of take it on. But it's sort of evolved a little bit where um, just talking with Jill, now we're looking at special projects, trying to like gather throughout the state really cool initiatives that are going on in certain topics like that could be in access and special populations and then so identifying those and then maybe sharing those with this organization so that maybe you know if we're trying to improve equity and access but you know maybe there's a high school that's really like locked it in um, hopefully Jill and her group would identify those things and then be able to share them with the group so we can be like oh man that's that's awesome. Like that's what we want to do, and we, we'll see if we can replicate it. Is that sort of what what we what we've talked about? Is that the gist of what the committee would do, Jill? Exactly. Yeah. And so we can definitely. Um, I think working towards the March second conference would be great to have a, a couple of presenters ready for that, um, and we can see what else might be helpful. Awesome. Yep. Maybe before we move on here. Um, so whenever we meet in person, typically we, we can gather people who are interested in serving on these committees. We obviously can't right now, but if you're interested in either helping with Becky's committee, the communication committee, with Karma's committee, the events and helping to plan for uh, future UASEP conferences, um, or Jill's committee in gathering these special projects, could you in the chat post your name and email address and the committee you're interested in serving with? so that we can put together that list of uh, individuals who would help uh, these three uh, with their committee. If you could do that, that would be wonderful. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not a super time intensive uh, responsibility. I mean, we're all, we've all got our main jobs. So uh, whatever time you can dedicate, uh, even if it's just a few times a year getting together and talking and then maybe reaching out to some folks to, to, uh, to help collaborate with whatever we need to get done in those committees, that would be phenomenal. So if you can think about those three committees, communications, events, and special projects, which one you would like to serve on, and, uh, and again, post your name, email address, and then that committee in the chat, that would be wonderful. We'll gather that and then distribute it to those three committee chairs so that they can uh, reach out to you when they're ready to get together and gather some information. Okay, uh, Camille, do you have anything that you wanna add? Um, nope, I'm good. Um, I do wonder if we ought to kind of check and see. I was having a lot of problems with the listserv getting emails in. Is any of, have any of the rest of you experienced that? Or maybe you haven't since you're here? Yeah, if you've had any issues where we've sent out emails through the listserv and you didn't get them, but you heard about them or you got them from another source, let us know. Maybe if you could post uh, your name and email in the chat and uh, and then just mention that you had a problem with uh, getting uh, getting the listserv emails. We can dig in and see if you're if you were included. If you're if you're listed on the listserv, then and you're not getting those, then then there's an issue. 
Uh, if you're not in the in the listserv, well, then that's probably obviously the problem. But yeah, Camille's been having some issues. So if you could post name, email, and that you uh, have been having some issues getting listserv emails, that would be fantastic. And and Brandon, it seemed like just resetting my account fixed it. So oh, did it? So yeah. Okay, so, great. That's good. Great. So if anyone else is struggling with that. Awesome. You know, another thing we could potentially look at too, if the listserv isn't working for everybody, uh, NASEP just purchased a new listserv uh, software. Uh, we, we can't use NASEPs, but we have a fair amount of money that, uh, that we've carried forward over the years that we could potentially use uh, to get a subscription to, to a different listserv service, um, if that's something that works for others. So something to think about. Okay, anything else, Camille? Not right now. Awesome. All right, does anybody have any questions for these committees? Or any suggestions overall for the organization? As we try to figure out which direction we're gonna continue forward, what, what works and what doesn't work. If there's anything that you would like that uh, could be a good value add to you, maybe you have a suggestion on format um, or content, uh, let us know. So we can we can consider that as a as a committee. Okay, let me share my screen again here. Okay, we're going to talk about ad hoc projects. So when we sent the survey out a little while ago and ask people, um, I can't remember the exact questions that were on there, um, but they had to do with you know, some of the challenges you're facing, uh, some resources that you would love to see, uh, that, that sort of thing. We gathered the results of those survey, Camille compiled them all together, and then we organized them to try to figure out what is it people want. And then after that, we started organizing them into, okay, well, would this be a good uh, like resource that's on our website? Would this be a good item of discussion on the listserv? Would it be a good webinar? Would this be best for a conference or something else? All of the something else that were things that we maybe should develop as an organization were listed here under the ad hoc projects because in the bylaws, we talk about having ad hoc committees that we could put together to work on some of these special projects. So what I wanna do is go through the different projects that came up and as I go through these, ask yourself, is that something that I think would be fun to work on or that I, that, that, uh, you know, I might have the skills or the expertise to be able to work on? And if it is, then again, in the chat, post uh, the, the project. And what we would then do is make you the owner of that project. And you could work at it on your, at your own pace. I mean, if you wanted to like, let's say there's a, the course creation process. If you wanted to put together a little video or some instructional resource that talked about, this is how the, the course creation process works in the state of Utah, um, especially for new folks or lots of folks who are, go, who are saying, you know, I wanna create a new concurrent course, how do I do it? Um, you'd be the owner on that. And if it takes you all summer, if it takes you a year to put it together, then that's totally fine. If you wanna knock it off in the next week or whatever, um, that's gonna be totally up to you. You don't have to do this solo, you would just be the owner and you could gra grab a committee of, of people and sort of work on it collaboratively. Um, but here are the ad hoc projects or the projects that came up or the, uh, the resources that people mentioned, you know, being interested in having. So the first one, how the course creation process works, a concurrent enrollment 101 training video for CE coordinators slash program managers slash site reps. Um, basically the people in the high school who own the concurrent enrollment programs. So some sort of a concurrent 101 training video. Another is a concurrent enrollment 101 for CE instructors. What are some, some basic general you know, principles or concepts that instructors need to understand about concurrent enrollment in general or how things function and processes and that sort of thing? It's gonna be, there's certain things that are unique to each institution, but there are some general principles and concepts overall that could apply to any concurrent enrollment instructor. Uh, the next is a concurrent 101 for CE directors. So the directors at the different UCI institutions, perhaps there would be a, one, a basic uh, you know, introduction to concurrent enrollment for concurrent directors based on their roles and responsibilities. The next one is a change management slash project management 
um, how to institute change and get everyone on board and excited. If anybody is really good at this, change management and project management, and thinks they can put together a training or a video or a document or whatever, uh, they could give people some pointers on how to do that. Um, that would be phenomenal. Next is the bridge program overview. So it's sort of some resource that uh, that is an overview of the bridge program. Could be a one sheet, could be a video, could be a website, could be whatever, whatever that uh, individual or group wants to make it into. And last of all, a uh, description of how math pathways work. Maybe it's fun animated video, maybe it's a, a, a PDF, could be anything. So look at those ad hoc projects. And now the big question is, are there any takers? So if you would like to work on um, one of these projects, then go ahead and post that in the chat, the project you'd like to, to oversee. And then again, you're welcome to gather a committee. You're welcome to reach out to the whole organization. Like say you're gonna do a video and you want, uh, you know, you need some video help. Uh, we, in our office, we have an intern who does uh, video production for us, a student intern that uh, that we could borrow out to anybody who needed to create something like that. Maybe there are other institutions that have access to graphic designers that could help you work with a, a flyer or something like that. So if that's something that you would like to own and see forward, again, post it in the chat, uh, the one you'd like to, to, to own. If there's multiple people that say, I wanna do this uh, change management thing, then great, we'll combine you together and let you work on that. And again, at your own pace. If nobody wants to take any of these on, then none of them will get done and that's okay. So, but these are things that everybody was interested in, uh, in, in seeing created based on the survey that we created. And once these are, cre are, are completed, if they, if they ever get done, then they reside on our website for everybody to access at any time. And uh, yeah. Okay, any questions on ad hoc projects? Let me just take a quick look at our uh, chat and see if we had any questions come in. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on then and talk about the bylaw updates. So last time we met as, a, as an organization, uh, which was back in March of last year, uh, we had proposed some changes to the bylaws. And one of the things that we brought up as well is we talked about, should UASEP become a nonprofit organization? And what we found when we reached out to uh, UC institution and state office uh, legal counsels is the recommendation was that UASEP not become a nonprofit organization. There were several reasons why we should not do that. And they also said that UASEP shouldn't maintain any financial accounts, which right now we have uh, over the years from different from our membership fees and from uh, you know event surpluses, that sort of thing. I think we've accumulated, uh, do you remember Camille, is it like $20,000 or something like that? It's not that much, but I will look it up. Okay, it's, it's in the thousands of dollars. And uh, so we said, so what do we do with this money then? Uh, what were your recommendations be? And the recommendation would be that we spend that out in, in future events. So basically, in the, in the future, in fact, I'm gonna go through this so uh, because this will address what I'm about to talk about. So what do the bylaw changes look like for the organization um, based on these recommendations, the changes that we made? And we sent those out to the membership, everybody voted on it and the changes became uh, permanent. Uh, the, uh, basically, members would no longer be charged a membership fee. So in other words, it costs nothing to be a member of the organization. Anybody can be a member and, uh, and, and uh, we wouldn't be collecting any sort of fees that way. Uh, membership would now occur at the individual level instead of the organization level. So in the past, it was an organization would be a member, now it's individuals and there's no cost. So then how do we join and how do you track who's, uh, who's a member of the, of the organization? So to join eligible CE practitioners, all they need to do is complete a short electronic form each year that we would distribute to all CE practitioners across the state. Um, that could be either through this, uh, the UCI concurrent enrollment directors could send it to all their high school partners, or we would partner with, uh, with both Sid and Nate and have them send them out uh, this, this short form. 
which basically is just your name, your email address, and uh, and your whether you're associated with higher ed or public ed, and then you're added to the UASEP listserv and you're a member of the organization. So super simple, no 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 uh, tracking uh, like money or any of that kind of stuff. So it should make things really easy to uh, to become a member, and hopefully we'll then as a result attract more concurrent enrollment practitioners to participate in the organization, especially if as an organization we can add value to everyone out there, so which is what we're really working on. And then last of all, the in-person UASEP events would be free of charge until UASEP's carry forward has been depleted. So once we've depleted the carry forward, then a registration fee would be assessed at each event just to cover the cost of the event. So that would be the venue, the food, and anything else that's associated with the event. That fee would be charged by the institution hosting the event, and the institution would be responsible for any de minimis profit or losses. So once we've emptied out, if Salt Lake Community College was hosting it, we would set a registration fee that covered whatever we thought our expenses were going to be um, just to cover those expenses. If we end up with a little bit of a loss or a little bit of a profit, then we just keep that here within our institution, which hopefully should be pretty minimal. So anyway, those were the changes uh, to the bylaws, the bylaw updates. Are there any questions that you might have about the bylaw updates? Brandon, yes. you were correct. It's around 24,000 actually that we've got oh, wow. to spend. So. Okay. So we're gonna be having free events for, uh, for oh, wow. probably a, a, a few years, or we're gonna bring in Tony Robbins <laughs> to speak to us and motivate us, right? <laughs> Actually, I don't think 24,000 would even come close to covering his speaker fee, but <laughs> um, yeah, so we have the ability to, uh, to bring in some decent speakers. I mean, if we find as an organization, let's say, you know, that equity and access is really hot right now. Um, if we were to find a national speaker who has just done phenomenal things on equity and access, and they've got a you know four thousand dollars speaking fee or five thousand or whatever. We could bring them in as the keynote speaker to then hopefully you know influence some ideas and then break out into you know some breakout sessions to talk about how do we implement what the speaker's talking about and then come up with some real uh, uh, high impact projects that actually come to fruition and not just you know a lot of pontificating going on. So. Yeah, so anyway, those are those are the bylaw updates. And it looks like no questions. Okay. You know, one thing that I will throw out when it comes to the bylaws, one of the things that we have in the bylaws still is we talk about a secretary and treasurer. So um, and then I and then I believe it talks about the you the how we would handle money. So with these changes and the recommendations to not hold any financial accounts and to not become a nonprofit, um, I, I'm thinking we probably need to relook at the bylaws and perhaps remove anything that has to do with the treasurer. Um, maybe for next year or something, although we do have, we still have financial accounts. We've got the $24,000 that we need someone to manage until, until that's depleted. So perhaps we just keep it in. You guys have any thoughts about that? Um, keeping in the treasurer for now, uh, or do we do we update the bylaws right now and we just deal with the money? Anyway, you can go ahead and post your thoughts in the chat and we'll go ahead and move on. Unless somebody has any questions I wanna bring up. Okay, next one. We need a secretary. Um, now that, now that Holly's gone. So let me walk through quickly sort of what the position description is. And, uh, and then we're gonna do a little call out to see if anybody is willing to take that on. Um, we did have in the survey one person that was nominated, but first I'll go through this and then we'll bring up who is nominated. And if that person is willing, then great. And if not, then we'll sit here in silence until someone uh, gets suckered into it. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the position description, attend super awesome UASEP leadership meetings and UASEP conferences and, uh, and meetings. So that's the first responsibility. And it's been a phenomenal leadership team. Uh, we've got some, we've had some great ideas, great conversations, great meetings. We meet maybe once a month if, uh, if we feel it's necessary. Otherwise we, it might be 
um, once every few months. So just to sort of talk about what we need to do as an organization to keep us moving forward. Uh, record and prepare the proceedings of any gathering of UASEP as needed and uh, distribute materials to the members as needed uh, following the meeting. Normally communication stall members would just be done through email, probably through the listserv. So uh, we take some notes, send those out uh, via the listserv and uh, yeah. Prepare official correspondences as required by UASEP. If we have anything that needs to go out to the membership that the leadership committee has agreed on, then the secretary could send that out. Uh, next, keeping and updating the membership roster, uh, which is as simple as sending out that electronic Google form or whatever it is to everybody, and then compiling the list of everybody who's interested in being a member and getting that to the communications committee in order to uh, uh, for them to add it to the listserv and keep the listserv up to date. Uh, submitting annual reports to NASEP is required. Uh, if NASEP requires any annual reports for our organization, then we can, the secretary would throw those together in collaboration with the, uh, the leadership committee. And then last of all, keeping keep an updated copy of the bylaws uh, as, and, and this part is supposed to be and amend, as amend, oh, as amended, which can be made available to all members. That's on the website, uh, it's pretty simple to do. So, Okay, we had one person nominated and, uh, and let's see if this person is willing. So the person nominated was, was uh, uh, Jennifer, uh, let's see, uh, what's Jennifer's last name? I think, okay. Atherley, is that, is that right? Yes, that's me. <laughs> okay, Je so, Jennifer, are, is that something that you would be willing to do? Um, <laughs> can or I think able? about it? <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, let, I'll, I'll think about it and I'll get back to you today. Okay, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, is there anybody else who would be willing or that wants to nominate somebody that we can, uh, like I said, suckered in, because we all got suckered into the, to our positions. So. <laughs> Uh, anybody that would be willing uh, to serve in that role if, uh, in case Jennifer's schedule would not allow her to do that um, and some of her other responsibilities. Okay, if not, then what we'll probably start doing is calling people up <laughs> and, uh, and seeing if we, can, uh, if we can find someone that would be willing to do that. I know everybody's busy. And like I said, we'll, we'll, we, we try our best to uh, make this as, as light a responsibility as possible because uh, we, we all have, uh, have uh, our different responsibilities we need to take care of. Okay, good. And I need to put a plug out there. So, so Brandon and, and Becky and Jill all are on the committee and they're from higher ed. And then um, Karma and I are from public ed. So it would be really great if we had another public ed person on there, balance it out a little bit, just a FYI. Awesome, great. And we had another one come in uh, as, a, as a backup. So we've, we've at least got one other person. Um, okay, cool. Let's see, let's uh, go ahead and move on then to uh, 